I've been watching this all week. It's a broken Frister and Rossman Model 10. Now this is a rare, rare machine and I always say to collectors, buy shiny because there's not much you can do with the gold work. I don't touch the gold work, but you can see like in this case, it's got no cabinet, it's got no case, it's got no hand crank, all that I can do and I can find an old lid and a catch in a box. So I'm gonna buy this 9.99, 12 pounds delivery, and we're gonna go on a journey together and we're gonna see this resurrected into a sewing machine made back in the Victorian era and resurrected in 2020. I found a lid and I've made the locks for it. These are those bits that go inside there and the catches. And um, now it, the woodwork takes just as long as the sewing machine sometimes. And that's the base and that's the catches again have to match perfectly because they're lifting quite a weight. And the machine itself, I've done really well. I found a hand mechanism and built it up been rummaging around in my shed and built up the hand mechanism perfect and the 24 pieces needed to make the bobbin winder work perfectly all together lucky enough I have loads of sheds full of parts so just keep going and going and going until it's like Lego it's Lego for engineers building sewing machines but she's starting to look absolutely beautiful <laughs> Well, we're getting to the near, if you come in close now, we're getting to the point where we're starting to make the wood look really nice. Now, we don't want it to look brand new. We don't want it to look like a Bentley dashboard. We want it to look like a 130 year old workhorse. I love the little pin marks and the scratches. So we're down to very fine wire wool and a little bit of stain of wire wool and stain. And we're getting to the stage where we're just gonna walk away from it and go, that's done. So we're nearly there before the varnish. Well, that's the lid still to do. But let me show you how we're going. We've 23 hours into our refurb and the base has come out absolutely beautifully. I'm so pleased. I found an original period Frister and Rossman base. Look at this marquetry. Isn't that just fantastic? Thousands of little bits of wood slipped in and that's centimeters all along there and that base that old machine has gone there like a foot into a well-worn slipper absolutely period and perfect i noticed i still haven't unseized the machine we've got the hand wheel turning and everything but i haven't unseized the machine yet that's for another day after i've done the lid but there's been some touch up right behind these parts there by hand. Now that must have been done in the factory after the decals were put on because you can't get to that little spot without taking those guides off and they haven't been removed. So very, very interesting. Even after, even in the factory, they would repair the gold work before it went out onto the market. But we're getting there. Alex is now doing the, the lid of the sewing machine. I think he'll be really glad when this part of it is all over. Well, Alex is now onto the staining. This is um, walnut stain because most of the early cabinets and boxes were 
beautiful walnut veneer and you can see this marquetry start to stand out there'll be several coats of stain and several coats of varnish and some more filling but it's it's getting there When I was just a kid, luckily, just 11 miles up the road on the Gill Road Industrial Estate in Heathfield were the Frister and Rossman main depot storage facility for all their sewing machines and their repair centre. And one day they were closing down and they decided to go off to Bristol. And so Tim Lavoie and all the team went off to Bristol, but Ben retired and they were clearing out the warehouse. And one night he turned up and he, he was carrying this box which weighs about 10,000 pounds and inside it was like it was like the treasure of Tutankhamun for for sewing machine engineers it was all the old shuttles that they found these are brand new 100 years old but brand new new old stock and he just said to me they were either going in the tip or would I like them? Keys, booklets, you name it, everything. Oh my God, I sort of grabbed it off him and I was so happy and I've been using them ever since. And amazingly enough, the original Frister and Rossman key for the lid, how perfect is that? Now, let me show you how far we've got. We've gone past the 50% mark, so we're more than halfway. The lid I decided not to varnish because it came up so well, the wood just started to come back to life. So I've waxed it. And the more wax you put on that now, the better it's gonna get. And the machine itself is ready for the refurb. So now we're going to start doing, getting rid of all the corrosion because you can't have corrosion on a sewing machine. What happens if you have corrosion it's like little pairs of scissors it just snips the thread all the time so we've got to remove all that and i'll show you all that but just look at that lurking in the background what's arrived in the post that's a plating machine for straw boaters and that's my next project but i'm going to finish this first Cleaning the metal on sewing machines is easy, much easier than people think, and I've got a good demonstration. Uh, we're nearly done on the Frister and Rossman. We're just gonna do the last slide plate. I've done all the other bright work, metal work, and here's the slide plate. And so, if you look at this, this is a before and after for, for a plate, and that and that were identical, and it's amazing how you can bring it up. Now I use, simply, I use three things. I use engineering emery, okay, and I cut that off. It's a, like a cloth-backed emery, and this is 300 grit. And if you rub it together, you get much finer, you then it becomes four or 500 grit, so it's for finer work. And I use wire wool, but I use grade 0000, that's the finest wire wool. I use a Dremel and I use wire brushes. Now put your goggles on and the first thing I do, oh, so I got a bit of sewing machine oil. The first thing I do is get the rough rust off. So I just basically pick that off and I, again, I'm on my yoga mat so I can push it down into the mat and it holds it. So we get rid of the loose rust and then I'm gonna get my emery and I'm gonna put a drop of oil on it and I'm gonna fold it in half. This is very messy, so you might want to wear gloves. And then we're just going to rub the surface of the metal and do it in a straight line, because if you start scratching it left and right, and up and down and round and round, you're going to um, put scratches in the machine that you don't want. So we're just going to do that a few times. And when we start to get the polish up, I'm gonna wipe it off and see, you keep looking, so you can see in the middle we've started to get now, if I want it brighter, obviously I'm gonna do the whole lot, but you can see that middle bit, that's where we want. If I want that even shinier, that's when I can go to the wire wool, and that will take it up another little polish. So we can just again polish, polish the middle piece there, 
and you can see just that middle bit how lovely that's starting to look and it's starting to look like a lovely old Victorian piece of metal and I'll do the rest of the plate before it goes back. The Frister and Rossman has come on beautifully and it's all released while I had everything apart and cleaning like I've just shown you um, the whole machine has released up and the last job to do is to set the tension so that's the big thing getting the tension right oh my grabby little fingers but uh, yeah that'll be the last job so we're on a roll We are on the last final downhill run and we're doing the tension. The most important part on the sewing machine is the tension because all of this is irrelevant. All of the work, 42 hours so far, all of the work is irrelevant if we don't get a nice stitch off it. Now, lucky enough, the bobbins on the Frister and Rossman quite often have holes in one side and as anybody who's got a shuttle knows, the shuttle only goes in one way. Well, lucky enough with Frister and Rossman, the holes are always at the top. So I've set the tension up. I've done a very nice booklet on tension adjustment because adjusting the tension is the key to a lovely stitch. And you have to have it quite tight on a shuttle machine. This is gonna be so interesting. I've threaded it up. We're gonna drop that in. And now fingers crossed, I've timed the shaft up, I've cleaned, I've oiled, I've set, and we're in the middle of the coronavirus lockdown. So lucky enough, I've been given loads of fabric um, from nurses, costumes and everything. So all my colours are hospital colours at the moment. So we're gonna try a little bit of this. Um, oh, fingers crossed. And we're going to see. Incidentally, if you have this kind of bobbin winder on most of the German machines from the 1900 on that had this kind of winder, when you thread up the thread, it always goes behind and underneath here. Um, so that, actually I can show you, it goes underneath here to the, to the shuttle, to the bobbin, because on the back here is a banana shaped curve and that's what gives you your level wind when you click it on. So, right, we're ready to go. Deep breath, fingers crossed. Ah, I've thought of a name for her. While I've been doing the machine up, the number 10, I've been, first of all, is definitely a girl because she's way too beautiful. And secondly, number 10, a top of the range. And I suddenly thought number 10, Maggie Thatcher. So I thought Maggie, so we're gonna call her Maggie from now on. And here we go. God, I don't want to turn this. No, come on, let's just do it, right. Oh, it's stitching. I don't know if I've got the tension right yet. But we've definitely got a stitching, which means I've got the timing and the feed right. So now I'm going to turn it upside down. Once you get it stitching like this, give it a good old run. It's, it's pointless um, trying to adjust the tension until it's had a good old run in. Because if you remember, I mean, we'd, we've built the whole of this up. So a lot of this is working for the first time. Right, turn it over. Ah, oh, that's crazy. Look at that. 130 years old and that's doing a better stitch than a new machine that's crazy all right that's i'm just going to carry on stitching all day now what a journey we've been on we have resurrected the most beautiful machine like a phoenix she has risen out of the ashes and here she is in all her glory. I feel like a, a blacksmith who's just pulled his blade out of the burning oil and, and he's looked at the steel and thought, wow, now we have something special. And for the first time you can really see, I can hold the camera still enough, you can really see what a tremendous, beautiful machine she is. And this is what I first saw when I, I looked on the internet and thought, wow, and who knows what the next hundred years holds for her. She'll be cherished, won't she? My wife wants me to sell it. Oh, I don't know about that. Bye for now.